as you're aware, we're here today uh, to announce a cooperative effort um, that resulted in the unprecedented arrest of uh, 36 defendants for welfare fraud here in Orange County. And when I say unprecedented, I mean it in the pure meaning of that term. We have never, ever in the history of the county, we have one of the uh, special investigative uh, unit uh, chiefs in the back from DSS, we have never really tackled this issue in Orange County the way we have and the way we're going to move forward from today. Um, to that end, as I said, I'm here to announce uh, 36 defendants have been arrested or charged with welfare fraud here in Orange County um, to the tune of bilking the taxpayers $337,682.99. The breakdown of that is 130, approximately $131,000 was from the daycare program, uh, $81,000 approximately was from the SNAP program, that's commonly known as food stamps, $62,000 was from Medicaid and Medicaid-related programs, and $62,000 was from public assistance. Um, Commissioner Caldwell will address uh, exactly what those programs entail a little later. This is something that I said when I was running for district attorney would be a priority because I thought it's been overlooked for years. It will not be overlooked anymore. Um, and I am very proud to have a cooperative effort where I have partners in this. First and foremost, the Department of Social Services and their special investigative unit and all the individuals that work in that unit, the Sheriff's Department who have put mm -hmm. their time and effort into this, and the support of the County Executive. But most importantly, I'm very proud that the members of my staff, uh, the Assistant District Attorneys handling these cases, as well as the investigators who have worked on these cases are here uh, today, because without their work and without their effort, we could not be here. And so you understand, on these cases, one typical case, in order just to get here today, from our office, from the district attorney's office, takes about 18 to 30 man hours of investigation just to get here. That doesn't include what the sheriff's department does. That doesn't include what the Department of Social Services does. But we have to send a clear message to the citizens of this county that this type of fraud will not be tolerated. Because when this fraud is occurring, what's happening is for every person that's getting this, and these 36 people here didn't deserve it, they're taking it away from somebody who needs it to get back on their feet, and we are not going to tolerate it. Um, I would like to just talk one more moment um, about how this process worked and how we got here today. Obviously, I said it was a priority of mine in becoming district attorney. How does the district attorney's office investigate this? Well, when someone applies for welfare, and Ann will talk a little bit more about that, there's what they call a FED system. It's an early detection system. If it indicates that there's problems or signs of fraud, a referral is made to the Department of Social Services. If they find that they believe that there's something criminal or it needs to be looked into, then it's sent to the district attorney's office. That is the only way the district attorney's office becomes involved in this process, is if the Department of Social Services flags us or tells us that there's an issue with a specific recipient receiving benefits. So that's how we got involved in this, and I'm very happy that the partnership we have here today, I think, is going to work well in the future, and the plans that we have are to have one or two of these types of sweeps every year in order to send a message to the people of this community. It's a priority, and it won't be tolerated. On that end, um, I'll take questions at the end, but one of the partners in this that made this possible, the sheriff dedicated a lot of his men, a lot of his time, uh, and his resources. Sheriff, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Well, thank you. Um, men and women, by the way, not just men. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I can report to the people of Orange County um, is that the partnership uh, between the district attorney and the county executive's office has never been better. Uh, I'm into my 12th year as uh, the Orange County Sheriff, and um, my agency has always been a willing partner, you know, eager uh, to um, serve the people of Orange County. 
and uh, the partnership we have now, uh, as I said before, has never been better. Um, and you've all been here to other uh, media conferences. Uh, this is just, you know, another uh, area uh, that this district, this district attorney uh, is taking an active role in, uh, active, uh, actively prosecuting. Uh, with all the other cases that, uh, you know, are in Orange County, uh, he's also giving this a priority too. Um, but I'd like to also, uh, you know, uh, give my uh, staff, uh, especially Investigator uh, Rodney uh, Carpentier, who put in uh, a lot of those uh, uh, man hours uh, in, uh, in bringing this case to fruition. Uh, I got a call, uh, I think about 10 days ago, uh, from our district attorney, uh, and, and who I speak to, I don't know if I speak to him on a daily basis, but almost on a daily basis. Um, and he said, hey, we've, this, is, this is what we've got. You think we can make it happen? And um, I called my staff up, and here we are today. I, I think we have, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we have 30 in custody and uh, six more charged. And um, that just goes um, to the dedication and the eagerness of what my staff wants to do, also working with the uh, district attorney's investigators uh, doing this. DA's office can't do it all alone. We can't do it all alone, but we can do it together. Um, and I, I'm going to introduce the uh, county executive, Steve Newhouse. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Uh, you know, there's one thing that Orange County is known for. We have a lot of wonderful things going on there. But when you talk about welfare fraud, Orange County is known historically, or what you read in newspapers or watch on TV or hear, hear on the radio, is not having a priority on fighting welfare fraud. Uh, social service has not had the support. Ann's office has not had the support uh, from the county exec's office, I believe, as a priority. The sheriff's office has not had the support of the county to do this, and neither has a district attorney. Dave and, uh, and the sheriff, uh, the, the district attorney and sheriff, I, I'm friends with all these people, so I use their first names all the time. But the DA and the sheriff and I, a year ago, while we were on the campaign trail, made this a priority. Mm -hmm. And we have now finally started to put this into fruition, giving Ann the resources she needs. She still needs a lot of help with this. So what I like to say is this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we are going to start prosecuting welfare and enforcing and investigating welfare fraud from Port Jervis to Newburgh, from Middletown to Monroe, Chester, Warwick, every place in Orange County where we see fraud, we are going to start enforcing it. W the way to do that, right now, we do not have the resources in play. So what I am going to be proposing to the legislature and the county leadership is to have a real fraud investigation team. It'll be composed of, of uh, additional members of the Department of Social Service, additional members of the uh, Sheriff's Office, and additional members from the District Attorney's Office and any other resources they need. Uh, predominantly, these positions are funded by the federal government. The federal government and the state government don't want to see their resources wasted, their money, the taxpayers. Uh, Dave said that uh, a lot of the money that these people are abusing uh, are uh, taken from people that could use them. They're also taking from hardworking taxpayers' pockets. Nobody wants to see this when I'm talking about a fiscal crisis that we've never seen in Orange County and when we have people right. suffering on, in the private sector still reeling from the 2008 economic shutdown. They don't want to see people taking the government or their taxpayer dollars taken for a ride. And that's what you see here. This is a huge focus. I'm tired of seeing Sullivan County, Dutchess County, Putnam County, every other county around us in the newspapers, in the, in the TV, and the radio on a daily basis on prosecuting welfare fraud. And we're sitting uh, and, and just letting things happen. And what we need to do is give these people that are in charge of this, namely the Department of Social Service, the resources they need, the district attorney, the resources they need, and the sheriff, the resources they need. And that's what I'm here to do. I am very proud of the work that Ann Caldwell's doing from social service. I'm going to ask her to come up and explain to you a little bit about what's going on here and what our priorities are. But I am very happy to be standing here to talk about this. This is really long overdue. So Ann, would you please uh, come up and say a few words? Sure, sure. I don't think we can unzip mine yet. <clears throat> This is bolted down to the ground. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I would just like to, to thank the county executive, the sheriff, and the district attorney and their staff for the tremendous support that we're receiving. It's unprecedented, and um, it's enabling us to, to do so much more. Uh, last year alone, we were credited with saving 
uh, taxpayers over seven million dollars in fraud prevention, detection, and uh, action toward holding people accountable. We, um, you know, can do so much more. I mean, that was alone without uh, much support. So with the support we have now, uh, it's very important to us. It's important that people are held accountable so that those coming in to apply will, um, that are uh, legitimately eligible. Um, we have over 100,000 citizens in Orange County that we serve with one program or another. And these are people in need. And um, we need to preserve, obviously, the, the taxpayers' uh, hard-earned money, and we need to also get benefits to those that need them to get a leg up. So uh, this is just such an opportunity for us. Um, I want to make sure that I recognize and thank the uh, supervisor of our fraud unit. It's a very small staff, uh, Janet Hendrick, who um, and her, her staff have done such a tremendous job. As I said, we, we, they've already uh, been recognized by the state for um, and applauded for the efforts that they've made. And now we can just take that, those steps further and make sure that those cases are um, uh, both prosecuted and uh, the people are, are held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. Um, one of the challenges that we face are, is that in an effort to make uh, benefits eligible or, or make people um, have benefits accessible to people is the fact that the, um, now there's self-attestation. The documentation that used to be uh, mandatory in order to receive benefits is no longer required. So people basically can say how much income they make, what kind of assets they have, um, and they will become eligible based on that information, which is, does not have to be documented. And that presents a big challenge for us. And I think that certainly led to uh, the, the significant increase in, in fraud activity. Unfortunately, it's just too easy to under-report income and misrepresent information, and, and it's led to this, this problem, which we certainly want to uh, turn around and eliminate, and um, we're very, very happy to be working together with our other county partners to do just that.